All right, let's go over this one. Not too difficult. This is for Pueblo Viejo. Uh, doing a little retrofit. This was like an RNS can or something like that. Uh, we're putting legs on it, putting on a backer, so that way it'll attach to the ceiling there. So this used to be mounted to a wall. So doing a little conversion there. Uh, Alma gets her sign. Yay. So let's go over lay of the land. It's mostly all own I know. So you just got a, like a big old backer here. We got uh, mounting plate covers. Look for those. And mounting plate cover mounts. Uh, we got a couple of uh, 45 caps. And we've got this uh, drill jig. So make sure you find this. Uh, we got a couple of mounting plates, quarter inch. And for Jose, whoever, but, you know, get us a decent flat drill guide for uh, install. So make sure install gets this, whoever. All right, so like I say, look at the picture here. So you'll find that this this can's in the wrap bay. Um, make sure, you know, so you're going to pop the face off so you can work with it, but save this face. Make sure nothing happens to it. Keep it nice. Um, so anyway, this is kind of how it's going to be. We're going to mount it to a backer, put the legs on the backer, and then it's going to mount to the mount up here. So anyway, so what we got is you got your backer here. Um, the way I see it, um, is that we've got, I've got four holes here and four holes here for, um, using to line up Clico style when you mount the legs to this oval. Now, one of the most difficult things is lining up an oval to another oval. So, you know, line up a square, fine. You got corners you can measure off of, you know. Um, you got a circle, fine. You just find the center of it and find the center and, you know. But when it comes to an oval, it's really difficult to find the actual, you know, unless you're in a computer like this and then you can click and see the node, that's the extreme. But there are no nodes in real life. Plus this is a regular channel letter, so it's going to be kind of funky. Um, so trying to line the existing uh, cabinet, which is in blue, up to an existing routed backer um, is a challenge. So um, I went ahead and made some holes in the backer that are can be temporary, but for the most part, they are going to be to help hold it all together when we're done. So we didn't want to have too many screws, but so what you're going to do is use these holes. These are one six fives. Just take a straight edge and then, you know, line them up to the center of the hole there or whatever and get your Sharpie lined up and then go ahead and make your cross and make your, you know, X axis and your Y axis. That will help you at least find, you know, vertical and horizontal. Then, you know, if they do it the way we do it, I do find that, you know, when I put mounting holes in something, I make sure that it's, you know, on the vertical center and the horizontal center. So you might get lucky enough that when you pop the face off, there might be mounting holes at these points that you can then, you know, use, you know, line them up and sight your line through there. And maybe that's, you know, hopefully that'll help you get that lined up. If not, it's an inch and a half outline ish, because I'll, like I say, this is, you know, regular channel letter and this is uh, CNC. But if you take your steel ruler, work your way around, you should be able to help center, you know, this oval into this oval and kind of get it lined up. Now, once you have that set up, um, and again, like I say, you're doing this right from the beginning. You're not putting legs on or anything yet. You're just taking the, the raw oval, make sure you get your lines on there or whatever. And you can put the lines on both sides, whatever helps you do it, but um, line it up. Anyway, so then what you're going to do is either slide it over a little bit and drill from the bottom, or if you get it lined up and you want to flip it over or you do it from the back, whatever, use these holes and do a 532nd Clico and use these holes temporarily and work your way around. And then that way you can now Clico this thing instantaneously. So now you can disassemble it, reassemble it with ease. Um, at which point then you can get the legs ready. So um, you, we're looking at two and a half by two and a half. I know the work order says two by, and I know the permit drawing says inch and a half. So as usual, we have all kinds of different sizes everywhere. But Alma was the one who told me she looked at it and she wanted two and a half by two and a half. We probably have a stick out back. If not, bring a stick in, but we want two and a half. So it's 50 inches on the, you know, on the long 45. So at this point, you can choose to either cap them or drill them before you cap them. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to take the jig 
and you're going to bonk the jig to the bottom of each of the sticks because the sticks will be the same length. Right. And you're going to bonk it to the bottom and then clamp it and then do these four holes. And then these four holes will match up to the backer. So that's how you'll have instantaneous, re you know, registration with the legs at that point. So that way you don't have to lay out the legs and all that. Um, so eventually the legs will get uh, lords to the backer, to the back of it. So, um, but then what you're going to do is cap it, clean it up. So either cap and clean, then do that or do this first, then cap and clean, then get that all, all done, cleaned up. Um, at which point, uh, maybe you can do the mounting, probably do them before you, yeah, probably do the pads before you actually mount it to the backer. So go ahead and do like we normally do. Burn your plate on. Great. Then you're going to have these guys. So you've got a one, two, three, and a one, two, three. You can see how this works. Um, and then you'll have two of these per pad. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to keep the seam. So when you're looking at it from the front, you want it to be a solid piece. And then when you come from the side, that's where you want the seam. And then you'll have two screws per to keep them level and straight where they're supposed to be. So you want the little mounting plate things, these little guys, on the inside and the outside, facing out. Um, so when you go to burn these on, so I have them on all four sides just to make these universal, but make sure that you are 90 degrees to your 45, right? So you want that to be the side, and then the side gets that little mounting plate thing. You're just gonna, I got big boy Clecos. These are 193s, so it's easier to route the quarter. Cleco them on, tack them. I got little uh, plug welds here. You can kind of tack them wherever you need to tack them and just tack them on both sides. And then you can see where from a side profile, uh, where's my side profile? Where you at? Where you at? There you go. So you'll see where it's like tack there, comes down, and then the screws will be on the side. And then they'll just come on from the front and the back. So that's how that works. Little covers. So burn the plates, get these little mount things on there. And then once that's said, I think I think you're good to go. Then you can just lords them really good and Cleco them on. And then that will handle, you know, putting the legs onto the backer. Now, the final, the way this whole thing is going to get, you know, together is that you're going to take self tappers and you're going to go through the back of the oval, through the backer plate, through, you know, that's how this whole thing is really going to be on there is you're just gonna self tap the crap out of it. Now you don't have to worry about transferring these holes. The holes that came from the jig here, these four Clico holes are just for referencing the legs to the backer. I know that once you put the the, the uh, can oval on there, it'll be blocked and you can't see it. Don't worry about trying to transfer those over. Um, you'll have these holes to help you realign with your Clicos. Um, when you go to put the self tappers in finally, like that'll be the last thing you do. Um, you know, send this all out to paint, get it all painted. And then the last thing you want to do is you're just going to shoot probably four self tappers, I would say per side. And that's just going to really hold this thing together at which point. So let's say we're towards the end here. So you're, you're assembling this thing. Um, you can go ahead and oversize before the aluminum backer goes out. You can oversize these for a number 10 from the back. So leave these, you know, 532nd inside the sign, but go ahead and just take these out to 0.22. Um, and then that way, when it's time to assemble this after paint, you can shoot number 10s from the back um, at the top and then over here and then these th here. That'll help hold this to the backer, of course. Just make sure those get painted and they look nice. And then once that's kind of registered on there, then you can just get crazy and either pre-drill or whatever, but you'll just shoot as many self-tappers as you want right through here. And then that's going to do all the work. So these little number 10s will kind of hold the can to the backer and keep it tight. Cause you know, this is a regular channel. So you got like rivets and stuff. So we want to make sure this gets nailed down properly. Um, but then, like I say, the final step is just, just shoot, shoot self tappers through and make sure this bad boy is not going anywhere. Um, and then, yeah, then these will be Lords plus self tap. So we'll be good to go. And then you'll already have these welded. So it should be good. Then um, probably you could do this maybe before paint, but once you get this assembled, you'll want to, uh, you'll want to see where the power is. So I think the power is either, I don't know if it's on the left or right. So you'll decide. So when you take the face off, you'll see there's a switch. Um, and I think there's a power supply in there. So you're going to want to run the power up through the leg. Um, there's no telling though, if, 
if there is power right where that leg's going to come through or whether or not sometimes the power might be over a little bit and install actually has to run it externally, which happens at these strip malls. But hopefully the power is above and they're just going to run it through the leg. So what I would do is, I mean, confer with install, but you can drill a hole. You know, if you want to take it out to seven eighths and then put a bushing, fine. But you're just going to, I would connect primary and then run your black, white, and green out and then maybe give them like two feet, bundle up a leash. Um, and then just, like I say, whichever side the power's on, that's how you do it. Um, and then they can deal with that later. And then even if they, for some reason, reason have to come in from the side or from the back, they can drill a hole externally. Hopefully they don't have to do that. Um, if not, they can deal with that. Just make sure, uh, you're not going to UL label this thing because it's RNS and it's not us and it's not really U ULable with the switch right there anyway. Um, but since we live that UL life, go ahead and put a knot you know, knot up the whole thing and make a strain relief. So make sure that leash is good to go. Even though it's not you well, we live that life. So uh, anyway, I think that's it. Um, pretty straightforward, you know, but if you have any questions, just kind of, like I say, just making sure everything lines up nice and looks good before you send it out to paint. So, um, but I think you get the gist. Um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, if you have any questions, hit me up.